Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV out in Meridian, Idaho today. Getting a look at an updated Eagle HT 24RE, taking a look at what's new for 23. And it's small little updates, but it's smart little updates. I don't think Eagle needed to go reinventing the wheel and I'm kind of glad they didn't. This model right here, uh, this is the smallest fifth wheel that Jayco makes. So if what you're looking for is something in that premium grade, I want, I want all of the things and all of the features, but I want them in the smallest package possible. That's where this one comes in. Now today, we are looking at it in a pure true couples camping furniture arrangement. What I like is they give you the ability to scale up or down your guest sleeping capacity and your furniture to your preferences. We'll talk more about that when we get inside. We've got some awesome qualities like whisper ducted air on this one and unmatched two plus three year warranty, automatic leveling even on this short fifth wheel. And it is hot cold camp rated. We're also getting to look at one today with some cool optional features like a full camera suite and their most advanced solar package that is possible available on this little fifth wheel right here which includes some sweet inverter action now one of my favorite parts of this and they do it in my nerd preferred way is that it is carpetless and has a carpetless floor flush no toe stub or slide uh, in the living room right there and it all just looks and feels so good and so clean together you got the nice um, blackout roller shades instead of the cloth mini or uh, you know pull down blinds that have the strings that get frayed or get loose over time they're just doing so many good things all of the good things in here this bedroom you can get it with a queen or a king bed the last couple years i've shown this with a king so if you're kind of curious you can check that out today we're looking at it with a queen either way though the extra bonus closet in the bedroom um it is washer dryer prepped so if you want to throw a combo unit up in there you want to spend some time you know just uh not not visiting the public laundromats because you don't know what kind of fuzzy bugs the next person has well maybe this one might be for you now it does have a couple hiccups it's got a, a serious glitch when it comes to road mode i will show you the good with the bad and if you like that make sure you hit that subscribe button and let's hop inside now, the first thing I think I want to mention in here is that we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor, but if you prefer brown tones, look at this thing called American Craftsman. They do offer two decors, which I'm going to give them bonus points for. Most manufacturers, they go basically, now, here's how we build it. You deal with it. Um, Jake at least gives you a choice, you know, uh, and frankly, the I like farmhouse. I still do. I've experienced a little bit of farmhouse fatigue, like a lot of people, because it just got so overdone in the, it's like... When you hear your favorite song on the radio and then it's like you can't get away from it, it quickly becomes not your favorite song. By the way, pro tip, if you ever want to enjoy a song long term, do not set it as your uh, alarm tone when you wake up in the morning. You will train your body to instantly revolt the moment you hear your favorite song. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, what I'm getting at is I still like this. I think I'm actually a little more in favor of their brown craftsman tones. Now, a couple interesting things here. They moved the electric space heat and fireplace out of the uh, pantry wall, and they put it over here on the rear wall. Now, it does mean that it would be a little bit close to this person's toes, but frankly, my wife would be all about that. Um, it, you know, she's always under a blanket or something like that, and uh, something to keep her toes a little warmer, she'd be, she'd be feeling pretty fine on it. Now, you don't see the square, so you won't hear the air, which that might literally be the original RV nerdism. And it began at number 37, by the way, just in case you're curious. <laughs> All the cabinetry is pocket screwed. And today we're looking at a model built out west and a lot of people out here boondock dry camp and they like that gas electric two-way fridge. That is an eight cubic foot fridge. Um, you can also get this outfitted with a 10, nearly 11 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge, which is what you have often seen uh, from this channel, uh, from, you know, my Midwestern store where those 12 volt fridges are more popular. I do personally feel, and I, and this is just an opinion. I think that 12 volt is the way the entire industry is going. And there are now several brands who have stopped offering, um, gas electric two way fridges and only offer 12 volt. And I'd be kind of curious. I'm going to ask you several different things. I would like your input several different ways on how, if you were getting one of these, you would like them equipped. And there's no wrong answer, but basically you've got several different options. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's start opening everything uh, over here in the kitchen. That is a larger 22-inch uh, oven, by the way, and I love that there's a full drawer below that. Notice, dude, that's like a big fifth wheel microwave. That is one of the little tweaks and enhancements they've made to these. They gave them a residential-sized microwave, and it is awesome. They've also upgraded to 4K smart TVs, and you might notice this has that giant Legend of Zelda hidden storage pantry in the back. 
Now, some people are going to wonder, why didn't they put the laundry hookups back there? And there's actually a very good reason for it. Laundry hookups on the back wall of an RV are not recommended by the washer dryer uh, manufacturers. If you install one on the rear wall, they actually will not honor their warranty on it. That's why Jayco did not put laundry hookups in the rear closet on this, which is unfortunate that that's all true because otherwise, yeah, it really would be the ideal place on this floor plan for some kind of laundry hookups. Now, I said that you can get these outfitted um, a number of different ways. Today, we're looking at the uh, freestanding table and two bonus chairs arrangement. I believe you can also get one of those Franken tables where it's like a half booth with a floating ottoman and then a couple chairs. You can also get this with a tri-fold sleeper sofa instead of the hide-a-bed. So you can get this for sleeping for two, like we're looking at today, up to five if you go with the tri-fold and the booth. I'm only calling the booth the single sleeper. I don't believe that's a double sleeper. That That is another one of those myth-busting things that I am out to knock out there uh, in the RV industry. Notice though, we are carpetless. We are uh, have a nice, easy, clean kind of situation going on here. And man, when you just, I'm, I'm just gonna take a seat here and just give you one last look around before we uh, hop upstairs. For a smaller RV, you know, when you really take it in, it's got a solid, solid kitchen. And especially considering that TV can pivot, Man, you are just on the ideal corner right here for some easy afternoon entertainment. Great if you're nearsighted like me, um, you're right on top of this thing. You don't need to get a telescope to watch TV at the end of the night. Now, something else you've never really overtly seen in an Eagle, but we actually do have expressed and present here in this RV, is that not only are the inverter prepped, every single laminated Jayco RV and a lot of their stick and tin RVs now are becoming some level of inverter prepped. And on this one, there would be five different outlets that are live to that inverter prep wiring. But we're actually in an RV today that does have an 1800 watt inverter installed in it that can do a lot of things. And that's a cool thing too. They're doing an 1800 watt, not a thousand. So like if you have something that's a little bit higher draw, like a, a hair dryer or something like that, it's gonna handle it far, far better. Now doing a little Michael Jackson moonwalk reverse scoop slide maneuver here, working our way up the hallway. Uh, there's a little space over here. It's hard to, to see from the living room. This is a better angle at it. You see some extra outlets, household and USBs right there. And that L-shaped kitchen counter, they don't waste any of it, which is nice. They're, not every brand takes as much time and attention to do that. Full window in the door, it is shade ready. Thankfully, that's a very easy install. I'm always, I'd always prefer to see it installed. And actually, this is, Jayco's not gonna like this. Cougar, um, you know how I've said in my videos, I wish those shades uh, in uh, pulled up from the bottom up. Cougar got LCI to do that. So Cougar's the first manufacturer I've seen. Like they went from just being shade ready in the door to actually having the shade in the door to getting a supplier to make a special exemption for them to pull the shade from the bottom up so it actually can be done from the manufacturing level. What do you think about that? Your input as viewers is what made that happen. Now, the space around the toilet is not too bad. Eagle HTs are a little shorter in terms of height in the upper deck as compared to some other brands, but for the most part, yeah, I can stand in that shower just fine. Technically, I could bonk my noggin, a little bit of a noggin knocker there uh, in the ceiling. I'm a little over six foot for reference, by the way, especially with the shoes here. Um, and you know what? This is a Max Air fan, and maybe this one just doesn't open as much as I would like it to. I'm not, I, I, I actually sat here in a very hot RV on a very hot day with that fan running, and I'm being a thousand percent candid with you. I was very disappointed. It did not provide the cooling and the airflow that I really thought it would. And I wasn't expecting miracles, you know, but I was expecting a little more than basically just. A lot of noise but I don't know maybe I'm just in one where the vent up top didn't open properly and just a nitpick thing left or right side take a pick and um, cut that middle shelf in half and give me a space for a wastebasket in the bathroom that's handy little stuff people don't consider now I like the full Lipitor storage medicine cabinet this corner over here though is very interesting this is actually the washer dryer prepped bedroom bonus closet or well not even bonus closet it is the bedroom closet but you can utilize it uh, from the bathroom as well. So it's kind of like it, it's pulling potentially triple duty, which is both its greatest quality as well as its greatest liability. Because the problem is you can't make it like laundry and closet all in one. 
Now, in some previous videos, I had asked the question, what if over there they added a closet slide for clothes so that if you utilize this over here for washer dryer hookup, you could still have some hanging clothing storage? And I would ask you again, what do you think about that? I'm still on the fence about it. I don't know that I want to go adding a bunch of extra cost or money. Or let me pose this idea to you. What if this RV um, had a uh, east-west bed slide in full front closet? Now, it would have to be longer, a little bit. It would have to be heavier, probably about 22 inches longer is what that usually equates to. Um, and it would add some money, but it, I think that'd be cool. Now, we're looking at the standard 60 by 80 true queen bed, not a shorty, and lots of room to walk around it. In my previous videos, you may have seen where you can option a 70 by 80 king into this, but if you're looking at an eagle that has a king and you want the queen, you can easily size it down. Sizing up is not terribly hard, just a little more involved. Look at the side stands though. Awesome for like, you know, wireless phone charges, a little stand, miniature stand fan to right in your face, you know, stuff like that. They got rid of the nightlight blue lighting, but what's cool is the lights above the bed, that switch operates that light. The person on the other side of the bed has their own switch for their own light. These are all 50 amp service, by the way. The one that we're looking at today is only, this is the standard second air prep. You can get this built with the second air straight from the factory though. And we can always install one here uh, for you if need be. Now peeking under that bed right there, notice how there's no big like ankle breaker step of death where you're gonna be walking uh, around the bed. It's also the perfect place to keep those guest chairs and whipping around the corner. You see that you've got that extra dresser space there. And again, that closet that kind of pulls double, triple duty as washer, dryer, bathroom, all in one Swiss Army storage. But I'm going to give them credit. They've got one of the best entertainment setups straight across the bed in a like north south bed fifth wheel I think I've ever seen. Now, for uh, rambling, gambling road mode over here or storage mode, whatever works for you. This one with that extended kitchen countertop, it kind of pinches itself off. That it's kind of one of its only Achilles heels, I think. Um, whether you get the freestanding table or the booth, it basically, the seating will come right up next to the island. Now the booth, you can kind of finagle. If you put the table down, you can do the Luke knee walker routine and you can snake your way around to get to the, uh, the living area. This one, the only way you're able to really do it is to do the Bow and Luke Duke yee-haw butt scoot boogie. Yee! I do my own stunts. And the one that we're looking at today, this is such a good example of the fact that, you know, the way that we build these can kind of vary regionally depending on what people are looking for in different areas of the country. Um, you, you're, you're going to see a couple different options on this from what you may have seen from our very Midwestern focused eagles uh, historically on this channel. But naturally, uh, an eagle does eagle things and there's a lot of things that are very similar like that big double entry handle. And of course, you've got the wider entry door framing up that two plus three sticker letting you know this thing has that unmatched warranty. But that's just a precursor to all the other eagle doing eagle things like the fact that they're one of the only uh, builders in this class, in this size, using like luxury fifth wheel uh, self-supported strutted stable steps so you don't have to do the heavy lifting. Now, something else uh, you don't hear me talk a lot about, Eagle HTs have actually had for a long time, it's basically a hidden option. You can put the Big Bird Eagle 16 inch radial Goodyear tires on there. Um, uh, you don't have to go with just the standard factory 15 inch, but that's not something you find on like any build sheet. You basically have to special request that. Some of our dealerships do that automatically. It just depends on uh, the region. I love how Eagle puts the speakers down here in the skirt so you're not blowing away the neighbors. And they do a nice job, even though it's not a massive pass-through. It's I think it's sufficient for a fifth wheel this size, and it's just completely, like, carpetless. It's not going to become, like, a mold factory, you know, a good old penicillin factory. <laughs> Motion lights on both sides of the pass-through, TV hookups, USB plugs to keep your Bluetooth speaker or whatnot charged up. And notice how they're treating the bedroom and bathroom deck of this just like they would a North Point or Pinnacle with that uh, double layer radiant barrier. Now they also run that across the roof, down the nose cap, through the belly, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house. And Eagle is zero to 100 degree uh, proven, tested. Now you see Eagles on my channel all the time. You don't usually see an Eagle HT, Little Bird Eagle, with generator prep. That is not something you find every day. Now this one, also doesn't have generator prep, but it is an available option on this. You can get it with what they call their dry camp package. Now, what's kind of cool about that is that not only generator preps that front compartment, 
but it will also uh, upgrade the propane capacity from dual 30 pound tanks to dual 40. So you'll bump up from 60 to 80, uh, basically getting one third more propane capacity. The only trick with 40 pound tanks, like you have to go somewhere to get them filled. But frankly, I think most 30 pound tanks, you also have to go somewhere to get filled. Not a lot of places are doing 30 pound swaptions you know, like a 20 pound tank at a gas station or whatever. That front compartment though is suited. You could fit up to four batteries in there, which is pretty darn cool. Now, um, at first glance, not a lot has really changed from last year. Like you still have that privatized and closed protected docking center with our gate pole valves, but some of the Eagle HTs, your pole valve was way up here and your sewer outlet was sometimes way behind the super slide. So by the time that you closed that valve, there was still like 16 foot of residual sludge waiting for you. Well, first of all, this floor plan, all of the sewer stuff outlets to one specific location, but basically they're building on a convenience valve on the outside of here for owners. Um, it might be something, if you're going to be cold camping, you might want to leave it open in the winter, but if you're, you know, spring, summer, fall camping, uh, if, if this outlet was really far back away from these pole valves over here, that it just gives you one more little like, oh my gosh, my sewer hose came off. Give me a chance to shut this thing off kind of uh, positioning. It's just, it's simple, it's smart. I really, really like it. You may also notice uh, we are still including, not we, Jayco is including the stinky slinky sewer hose up here. And once again, underbelly, fully enclosed, heated, protected, radiant barrier, all that good stuff. And Eagle HT was the first fifth wheel in this class to standardize their towing package. 3,000 pound rear towing hitch, safety chain hooks, and the um, wiring harness, uh, you know, a little four-way flat wiring harness. Now, something else you may have noticed, not only does this have their standard turn signal safety lighting, uh, it also, this one's outfitted with the full observation camera suite. So we have a rear view camera and dual side view cameras. Uh, so if you flip on your blinker, you can see if I'm hanging out in your blind spot in my little uh, Kia Soul, you know, waiting to get crushed by your fifth wheel over here. Uh, the J-Port with optional capital grill. So all the Eagle HTs will have the J-Port on them and they all have the option of adding that capital grill. However, let's say it's like uh, a model that already has an outside kitchen. The, uh, the griddle will actually be standard with outside kitchen models, optional otherwise. So just a little um, information for you, whether you're shopping this one or not. So like, if you like what you see out of this, be like, man, I wish it had bunks. Look at the 29.5 BHDS. It's literally the same fifth wheel with some bunks tacked onto the back of it. Now you notice how we got ourselves that roof ladder instead of one of the, you know, just telescopic removable mounts on a big, tall fifth wheel. I think that's the way to go. I don't like those telescopic mounts on fifth wheels. I don't mind them on trailers. I don't like them on fifth wheels. And looking up there, first of all, we've got the plywood decked Magnum Truss roof system. And you can see we've just got this Meridian location. It is one of our flagship uh, locations where we are just, we have tons of inventory here. But we have a plywood roof decking. And we're looking today again at the Overlander 2 solar package, the most advanced solar package you can get from the factory on one of these. Uh, it is uh, 400 watts of solar, dual 200 watt panels, uh, a 30 amp charge controller, and a 18 100 watt inverter operating five or six outlets depends on the floor plan in one like this that would be five if it had an outside kitchen the outside kitchen's refrigerator would also be wired to that inverter so let's say on certain models you can't get to the fridge um in transit on the inside if it has an outside kitchen and the inverter installed in it well then the outside fridge is going to be running for some travel snack a lack and and Okay, first of all, let me get the hat down. There we go. Woo, bright sun hanging low in the sky. That is that is brutal. Anyway, um, I want to talk towing. I want to talk towing safety on this real quick. And this is one of those, I'm getting on my soapbox moments. Feel free to skip ahead. But it's called an Eagle HT. The name very much implies half ton towing. Funny thing is, I don't think most Eagle HTs are generally half ton towable. It is possible to get a really beefy, say like F-150, but it is possible to get a half ton that can't handle this. And you're like, what are you talking about? My half ton can pull like 11,000 pounds. I can handle that all day. You can pull it, but you can't carry it. So this thing sitting here in its base form has like 1,500 pounds of hitch weight before cargo, before you get into your vehicle, before you add a heavy hitch into the bed of your pickup. So 
you're probably going to want closer to 2,000 pounds of payload, not towing, but payload rating. And if you don't know the difference between those two things, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But I want people to know the straight skinny on this because this is a very big safety thing, something I see just done wrong through the industry all, all the time. And it's kind of funny, there's other people like, like uh, GD over a big truck, big RV, he's talking about this all the time. It's not just my opinion, this is safety fact. You can get that information from several different sources. And if you appreciate the extra little insights like that, please hit that subscribe button or like our video if you've already done so, or, or leave me a little note, thanks nerd, whatever the case may be, and I'll get off my soapbox here. But um, I'll probably have this talk again at some point later in the year. So like I said, it, it is, very similar to what we saw last year, but a couple little updates. Like I love the standardization and the advancement that they've made in solar. And that extra valve on that sewer hookup, mm, chef's kiss right there. That, like you can get those. I even made a video on that extra little Valterra valve that you can add to like any RV. And they're doing it right from the factory. What's funny is because they did such a good job of enclosing and heating and protecting their gate valves, they had to kind of re-add one outside of the RV. All they've done is reinvent what already existed before. But you know what? To each their own. If you don't like that outside valve, leave it open. If you like the outside valve, use it. You know, that's what's great about these. You can do what you want, where you want, how you want. And with a shorter, smaller fifth wheel like this, you can take it pretty much where you want, especially with that bigger tire package they put on these. I kind of forgot about that. It's been a little while since I saw that. Anyway, let me know what you like. What is the one thing you'd change if you had the opportunity? And I'd love to get that feedback back to the factory. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.